Hi friends, it's me, Nicoletta Winters from Lacrimarta. From time to time, I like to do 30-day challenges for fun, to learn something, or simply to torture myself. Previously, I participated in Beattober in October 2022, creating music with both the Electron Octatrack and Yamaha's underrated gem, the QI-70. Last month, on July 1st, I decided to spend an entire month creating one AI-generated video a day for 30 consecutive days. I want to give my honest thoughts on my experience using AI image in video tech. Just in case you're watching this before seeing what I did for my 30-day challenge, be sure to check out the playlist linked at the top of the screen. So yeah, AI image and video creation. How does it work? What are the advantages and disadvantages to this medium? And also, Nicoletta, how could you? How dare you join the ranks of evil AI content creators stealing the collected works of, well, everyone? In order to create content every day using AI for an entire month, I realized that I needed a few things. One, I need software to cut video. I have Filmora already, so that problem is solved. Two, I need actual video to use. Three, I'm going to need sound effects and or music. If there's one thing you need to understand about AI-generated art, it's the idea of the quote-unquote prompt. What the heck is a prompt? Well, I guess it's something that makes my time being an English literature major a little more valuable? Maybe. A prompt is a series of words, aka the input, that gives direction to an AI to create something, aka the output. The prompt is the cornerstone behind how this technology works, so make no mistake, without you, the AI does nothing. By now, if you've heard anything about AI art, you've probably heard about this dude, Jason Allen, who won an art competition in Colorado with the help of Midjourney, an AI image generator to do it. So there's Jason. And here is his art piece, first place, wow. You also might have heard about Roger House, too, an AI artist who recently generated this image. As Midjourney has ruffled so many feathers, I decided that I would use this AI to help me generate images for my 30-day challenge. So I want to take this time just to show you how I use Midjourney. So Midjourney uses a prompt. And in this case, I have invited a mid-journey bot to a private Discord server for me to generate my images. Uh, all of these images end up being published publicly to mid-journey's website, unless, of course, you pay for their highest subscription tier, which allows you to have some sort of incognito mode. It was a little too expensive, so I decided not to do that. But here, I'll just show you. All right, so let's come over here to Discord, where I have invited a mid-journey bot to a private Discord server so that I can generate images. So the way you generate images is you just type uh, forward slash imagine, and that begins the prompt. And you can type in just about anything you can imagine. So let's see. Muscle man showered with hundreds of burritos and tacos. I'll do an aspect ratio of 16.9. Throw it in there. I'll just wait for it to start. The amount of detail that you can put into prompts is endless, but I think in order to get a better result, you need to you need to focus in on um, specific details. So in this case, it's pretty crazy. And then you just choose one of these images, and you can either upscale it or you can vary it if you really like it. Kind of like this one up here. This is a little, this is a little crazy. So let's go ahead 
I think that one of these will do better. So I'm going to upscale four. Great. And let's see if I can save that. Back in March, I came across a website, Pika Labs, that offered free AI video generation. Upon trying it, I tried prompting typical Nicoletta things like mirror-eyed succubus, drinks iridescent blood from a grail, cold purple fire rages across the land as fencing duels occur in gardens above the sky. The mirror-eyed succubus flies to observe the gothic fencing duels. The kind of video I got back was interesting, but it seemed more like a GIF than a seamless video. Now, where Pika Labs became infinitely more interesting to me was when I tried its other feature, which allows you to import an actual image into the website and generate a video from that image. I realized right then and there that one of the ways a lot of the crazy AI videos out there were being created was using a website like Pika Labs to process images from Midjourney in order to create video. So let's take a look at the first couple of video images that I did. Um, let's see. All right, so mirror-eyed succubus drinks iridescent blood from a grail. That was one I was pretty proud of. Um, these ones are the same thing. This one came out. This one's not too bad. I like this. She looks super cool. All right, so let's um, let's use the previous image that we generated, the tortilla um, burrito taco man. I'm going to put a negative prompt in of talking. I don't want him talking, so that's what, you know, a negative prompt, you, you put in something like um, blurry, distorted, like these things. And the AI will make a valiant attempt to try to not include or exclude those things from the video. And we'll do, let's do a rotation and zoom out. And let's just see what happens here. All right, so here it goes. Here's an example of, uh, of one of, one of the, the same image that we're currently processing right here. Not too great. It's doing weird AI things. I like how this chip is like floating up though. All right, let's see what this does. All right, that's, this is great. It still has some weird greasy AI kind of look to it, but he's one. So using Midjourney to generate images and Pika Labs to bring the generated images to life, that helped me solve problem number two. As a musician, I am no stranger to AI tools. Isotope famously implemented it into their ozone mastering suite several years ago, and while I thought it was interesting to be able to master at home, I found myself left wanting, because while Ozone mastered my songs to be listenable, I felt that the tech serves as a good starting point rather than being able to finish the task. For Lacrimorta's debut album in 2022, I opted to outsource mixing and mastering duties to an actual person, my good friend Xenon, who is responsible for a whole slew of awesome music. You should check him out. Ableton has recently included generative technology into their software, which can help create MIDI on the fly and at a much faster rate than painting it in yourself. What it can't do is create entire songs on its own. What it can't do is capture a vibe without you dialing it in. So 
make no mistake, even though tools like Ozone and Ableton use some aspects of AI technology, they are not tools that can create music on the fly. Enter Udio, a website that boasts being able to make full songs just off of AI prompts. As a musician, trying this website felt a little icky at first. Why? Well, it felt icky for the same reason Midjourney feels icky to visual artists. It creates finished music within minutes with just a prompt, just like Midjourney creates finished visual artwork. After trying it out, I found it to be incredibly impressive. With UDO, I solved the music problem for the 30-day AI video challenge. So let's just go to UDO. I want to show you how it works. Let's do a J-pop song about dancing with your loved one under the moonlight. All right. And we'll just let that go. All right, let's give a listen. Like I said, it's impressive, and um, it can also do that with English songs. It can do it pretty much with any language. I've tried Italian, I've tried French. It's impressive, and you can you can go in. Let's see. You can go in and impaint these tracks as well. If you don't like something, you can go ahead and change the, the lyrics and whatnot. So yeah, that's Udio. So how does Midjourney and Udio really work? Well, it's complicated and above my pay grade, but it's also not so complicated. My understanding is that these AI have allegedly been fed finished works from images and music available on the internet, most likely without the consent from artists to make the AI do what it does in conjunction with prompts. So let's just take a look at this uh, Reddit post asking where does Midjourney get its data from. Um, so Dali, another AI, was specifically given billions of pictures, photographs, paintings, digital art, etc., and originally trained as a captioning AI. They would give the program an image, and the program was trained to give it a caption, i.e., quote-unquote, photograph of New York City skyline at sunset, painting of Mona Lisa at the Louvre, metal sculpture that resembles a person, etc. Then the program was reserved. I'm not sure of the specifics of how it literally creates the images, but it is undeniably taking pieces of existing images and altering them to fit the prompt. There have been lots of posts where you can compare the original piece and the AI piece just to see how much is being lifted by the program from the original. There's a lot of opinion in um, what this guy's saying, but I think he has the right idea. Uh, another post says Midjourney grabbed the entire art station as their training set because those images tend to be well keyworded. I I think that um, this is super important uh, as as these um, images from art station Deviant Art being well keyworded and the the AI takes a snapshot of it. 
they're the, the AI is able to capture specific styles based on what you input via a prompt. So to continue what this guy says, now ArtStation starts to be filled with mid-journey artists posting their so-called art. The truth is there is no law preventing AI from being trained on somebody else's images. It doesn't capture the image nor store it. It basically looks at it and remembers the keywords. He gives a really good example too. You can create a very authentic looking Pablo Picasso painting of anything you want. So the AI understands quote unquote the concept. If I say I want an airplane in Pablo Picasso's style, it does it. Great. So let's get a little bit more of an empirical idea of AI image generation. And I, I think that there's a little bit of opinion here as well, but I'm going to go ahead and read it anyway. So what is AI image generation? AI image generators utilize trained artificial neural networks to create images from scratch. These generators have the capacity to create original realistic visuals based on textual input provided in natural language. What makes them particularly remarkable is their ability to fuse style concepts and attributes to fabricate artistic and contextually relevant imagery. This is made possible through generative AI, a subset of artificial intelligence focused on content creation. At the end of the day, I think the reason why AI generated art rubs people the wrong way is because it's a matter of consent. Companies like Midjourney didn't get consent from all of the artists that help to train that AI. And I, I'm sure Midjourney hasn't paid those people either. So that's that's one problem. The second problem is I think I think it's a matter of fear. So you must be asking yourself right now, what, well, why would you be party to this? Why would you spend the last 30 days of your life on Earth creating AI-generated videos? I'm heartless. Well, maybe. Hear me out. There would be no Dungeons & Dragons without Lord of the Rings. There would be no Lord of the Rings without Wagner's Ring Cycle. And Wagner's Ring Cycle would be substantially different if there was no Norse mythology. All of these things were culturally important to the times that they were created. All of them were built upon over time on ideas created by humans. Had AI existed back in the 70s when Gary Gygax created Dungeons and Dragons, the AI definitely would have sourced Lord of the Rings as an influence to create the game. Gygax himself was largely influenced by Lord of the Rings, and in one of the original iterations of the game, there existed Hobbits, Nazgul. It wasn't until after a lawsuit that he would have to rename Nazgul to Wraiths, Hobbits to Halflings, etc. Now, let's assume that you have the financial and artistic resources to create your dream motion picture. Would you yourself honestly choose an AI to help create it? Or would you rather have Christopher Nolan help you? Would you rather use an AI to supplement your project or a professional? I mean, if it was up to me, I would go for the professional every single time. Case in point, when it came to my last album, I had Xenon mix and master it. I didn't have an AI do it. But let's say you don't have the resources to hire somebody to help you finish your project. What are you as an artist empowered to do now that you couldn't do before? Well, for me, I have always, and I mean always, paid visual artists to help me do album artwork. But if I didn't have the resources to do that, AI has just empowered me, the musician, to be able to create album covers and music videos without paying tens of thousands of dollars to do it. AI is freaking people out so much because the playing field is now more competitive. Here's another question. If I learn how to paint like Picasso or write like John Steinbeck, would it be plagiarizing? No, not unless I decided to copy the derivative works. The structure of doing something in a certain way, i.e. painting like Picasso or writing like John Steinbeck, is a craft technique. It is not something that can be claimed as intellectual property. In my own previously published work, how did I create it? Was I not influenced by the likes of Cradle of Filth and Malice Miser? 
have any of those artists come out of the woodwork saying that I plagiarized their works. No. I made original works influenced by some of the ideas that they set forth in their own work, which also hold influences. They have influences as well. Independently, if I personally created any of the images I made with prompts on Midjourney, that art would be a combination of the aggregations of everything that I have experienced in my own life. Now, my, my philosophy is that it, everything that we as humans do are sourced from the same abstract place and that nothing we create together or on our own is truly capable of being owned. Sampling movies and music to create new works of art is no different than using AI text to do the same thing. Sampling has ruffled plenty of feathers. AI will continue to do so in the same way. Hell, modern hip hop wouldn't be what it is today without sampling. And Vaporwave? It doesn't exist either. So let me get this straight. It's okay to sample the Windows 95 opening theme for your sick new Vaporwave song, but it's not okay to use AI to create an album cover for your sick new Vaporwave song. What did I learn during my 30 day challenge? One, I learned video editing is difficult. So to those of you that do it all the time, I applaud you. Two, using Pika Labs to generate shots for a video is like playing movie director. You can generate multiple shots of the same image doing different things each time. Until you see what you like or what will work, you can keep generating. On a few of my videos, I felt like Stanley Kubrick, sometimes generating 30 plus shots of the same image just to get one second of usable content. Three, AI videos are almost all created by stringing short videos from a place like Pika Labs together in video editing software. In other words, I, as a human, had to put images together to tell a coherent and sometimes not so coherent story. Four, Music often changes the tone of images strung together. For instance, in my Tentacles and T video, the music elevated that to another level. Five, that I am an idea machine. Every single video that I created was from ideas in my own mind. Yes, I took my ideas and put them into ChatGPT to create trailer scripts to help me stay on task. But at the end of the day, all of the ideas brought forth in my 30 day challenge were mine and mine alone. So in case you're wondering why there were several tentacle centric videos during the challenge, that's why. Six, upscaling video in Pika Labs helps to make better videos. After generating acceptable videos in Pika Labs, I almost always upscaled those videos to be better quality. Seven, prompts in Pika Labs help me save time, as opposed to simply uploading an image and hoping something cool would come out of it. Eight, happy accidents happen working with AI similar to how they happen in other mediums of art. Nine, Eleven Labs is how I created narrations for several of my videos. 10, you can use the last frame of a video image to create a longer form seamless video. See my dancing goth ballerina video Lafay for an example of this. Number 11. I really don't like how difficult it was to pay these websites to use their product. In the case of Eleven Labs, I couldn't even subscribe at all because of where I live in the world. It's extremely disappointing that none of these websites take PayPal as a method for payment. Paying anyone for a service should not be difficult. That's business 101. 12. I wish that there was a software suite that could do all of these things uh, that Midjourney, Pika Labs, and UDO did for me in one place. 13. I wish I could do a little bit more explicit stuff. I am a fan of drenching things in blood because I am a horror fan, but I understand why we can't do that. 14. I'm glad to be done. Creating AI videos have been a lot of work for me, and it isn't as easy as writing a prompt and outputting exactly what you want. You still have to hone the hodgepodge chaos into something understandable and entertaining. Off the top of my head, I think that Midjourney is a good way to create budget album artwork. Midjourney and Pika Labs together is an incredibly potent storyboarding tool. Udio is scary impressive. It does music of all kinds so, so well. If you're looking to crank out content and stay relevant in the algorithm, this AI stuff might be for you. I think I may explore it again someday in the near future, but for now, I'm personally going to spend my August finishing up my next LP. So. There's that. I did the thing. I had fun. I know there's a lot of opinions about this. 
and um we're we're all allowed to have opinions and you know we're all allowed to um have them and disagree with one another and amicably walk away so i hope that this video was informative and fun and i thank you for watching peace